one of the shows that come on on today is um, Al Sharpton. And he called it Keeping It Real. Um, that, that's the title of it. And what he does is to talk about issues related to the African American community and, and try to come up with solutions. And, and then he's always saying, I'm keeping it real. I, I want to suggest this morning that that's what the writer of First John is doing. That's what John is doing. That he's keeping it real. All right. That All he's right. keeping it real. All right. Last week, uh, when we started this uh, letter, uh, we saw that that John talked about Jesus being real. Mm -hmm. And he said that we are not talking about someone who is a figment of our imagination. We are not talking about a fantasy. We are not talking about something that we, uh, that's, that we just read about. But we're talking about somebody we have experienced. Mm -hmm. that we have seen him, we have heard him, and we have even touched him. Yes. And, and we've not just done it when things were going well for him, but we've done it when things were not going well for him. We, we saw him do good deeds, and we saw him on the cross yes. suffering and dying. We heard him preach on the countryside, in the countryside. We heard him preach and teach on the mountainside. But we also hear him speak from the cross, mm -hmm. that, that we have actually touched him. We have encountered him. Jesus is real. Yeah. That's what John says, that Jesus is real. Yeah. And, and he said that because there were some people who wanted to say that, that Jesus was a spiritual being and, and that there was no way that God would send his son and the son would enter into the human situation. But, but John, uh, John says he did. He did. Yeah. This is the Jesus that we serve. And this Jesus has brought us into fellowship. This Jesus has brought us into fellowship with each other, but not only just fellowship with each other, but this Jesus has brought us in fellowship with himself, and this Jesus has brought us in fellowship with God, and that is our joy. Mm -hmm. Well, this week he keeps on talking about being real, keeping it real. Uh, that, that he does it in terms of life. He does it in terms of life. And he comes forth and he just says that, that Jesus gave a message. And that message is simply God is light. God is light and there is no darkness in God. And there is no darkness in God. And when we talk about light, light is, is power. Light is, is the source of light. Light, light is about growth. That, that really for, for things to grow, even for us to grow, we need light. Mm -hmm. you know, even though we say we need to not stay in the sunshine but so much <laughs> because of the rays, but we need that light because light is very important uh, to our physical growth. And not only just to our physical growth, but even to our emotional and mental growth. Mm -hmm. that, that light is, is, is very important. And so when we talk about God being light, we're talking about that God is, is one who can make us see clearly. God is one who is perfect. God is one who is holy. God is one who, who reveals all to, to us. God is not a secretive God. But not only uh, does he say that God is light, but in God there is no darkness. Mm -hmm. There is no darkness. There is no imperfections. There is no sin. There is no evil. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that he makes it clear that, that who God is. But then he goes on to say that if you say that you walk in the light, uh, you uh, have fellowship with God, but, but you keep walking in darkness, mm -hmm. you are lying. Wow. You are a liar, and the truth is not in you. And, but he says that, but if you do walk in the light, mm -hmm. if you do walk in the light, and, and, and yes, that, that Jesus is the one who is able to cleanse you from your sins. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is able to cleanse you from your sins. And if you say you don't have any sin, you are a liar. Well, well. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and when I 
Amen. Been there, and I have read, meditated on this over and over during the weekend, and it seemed like John was saying some contradictory things, but it came to me as, as it came closer to Sunday that what John is saying that yes, God is light, and in him is no darkness, and God is calling us through Jesus to be in fellowship with God and with Jesus and with one another, but what he also making clear is that we are not God. Amen. And so that means that and as we live life, we are going to have to deal with the vicissitudes of life. <laughs> and John said that because there were some people who had come into relationship with God through Jesus Christ. They had received Jesus. They had been baptized. And their thing was that they didn't have any sin. That, that, that they could call, and if they did have any sin, that, that they could just ignore it. They could just uh, wash it away because they were in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And John could say that still is still a reality. Get real. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> And, and so that's what John is, is trying to say to us this morning. And, and so as, as, we, as we talk about this, is that we have to think like that ourselves. Oh, yes, we are saying, yeah, I know I'm a sinner. But then there are certain things that we do or certain things that we say that point to the fact sometimes we are just like those people of John's day. That, that we'll go around and say, well, no, if you are a Christian, if you are in fellowship with Jesus, if you are truly serving the Lord, that should not be in the sick. Yeah. If you are truly in the Lord, that there should not be in the poverty. Uh -oh. If you are truly in the Lord, that you should not have any problems. Yeah. Uh -oh. We say that. In other words, we are almost saying the same thing that they say. <laughs> but what God through John is saying that we need to get real and let it be known that even though we are in fellowship with Christ, even though we are in fellowship with God, sin is still a reality Amen. and that we still have to look to Jesus. Amen. And when we look to Jesus, Jesus is able to take our sins away. Amen. Jesus is that priest. That high priest, Come on, the man. one who goes to God on our behalf, yeah. and the one who comes to us on God's behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is our bridge. Yeah. Jesus is the one who has stood in the gap. Jesus is the one who Amen. is standing in the gap. Amen. Amen. That he is the mediator. Yeah. And so I, I believe what, what John is trying to communicate to us, that we need to be real about life. And we need to be real about who we are in relation to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, we God is light. And God calls us into that light. But know that we are not God. Wow. That, that we are uh, still dealing with the realities of sin. But God has sent his son Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The one Amen. who is the lamb that takes away the sins yeah. of the world. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 Church as we come what? Yes. Amen. 
and 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 and, and we say that, but then we don't believe that. Well, and, and, and that God works for people through what? People. Through 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 people. Amen. So we sat out here and everybody said, Amen. We said we didn't have no sin. Amen. That we're lying. And the truth is not in us. And we say that. Amen. But then, after saying that, we kind of say, but we don't want nobody to know what those sins are. And we want to pretend, amen, that, that we really don't have any. And when, however they get exposed, huh, then our tendency is to what? Shun the one whose sins have been exposed. That's what Y'all get some dirt on me. <laughs> And y'all will have to decide, well, we may need to put the pastor out. We may have to ask for food. We've done that. Well, we get some dirt on the demons. Well, we can't have demons that do that. Amen. Members of the church, oh, I can't understand how they do it. Amen. And, and what John is saying is that even though you've come into this relationship with God through faith in, in Jesus Christ, amen, that uh, you know, it does not wash away your humanity. You know? And that the reality of the human condition is that we are one. That we have to deal with the reality of sin. Hmm? Amen. And so what John wants us to know is that God's not God not frightened by that. And God doesn't reject us because of that. And God doesn't stop using us because of that. Amen. <sighs> And that's why all the things that you meet in the scriptures, their flaws are very apparent. David's man after what? God's own heart. And to take time to read the story of God, how can this fellow be a, a person after God's own heart? Amen. Moses used this to break the lip. He was very short tempered. He killed an Egyptian. He was a murderer. Amen. But God used him to. Amen. To the level of the people from Israel. Yeah. Amen. You want to talk about about a womanizer, a whole longer, drunkard, amen, rubbish, whatever you want to talk about. But a great judge and a great deliverer of Israel, Samson. Hmm? Samson. Amen. So when you read the when you read the Old Testament, there are all these folks with their clear flaws, and yet God used them. But yet today, we kind of think that folks that God used ought to have no problems and no issues. So that's because they get they were they were dealing with Pope Jesus. Okay? So let's go to the New Testament. Paul, who wrote more than New Testament than anybody, amen. He was a persecutor of the church. He sanctioned the killing. And he never got over that. He said, I I'm the biggest sinner all the plus one. You know, after the law, I kept that, but in my self-righteousness. I, 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 I sanctioned the killing of those who, who believed in a way different than I did. And I came to find out that the way they believed in was really the truth. Huh? Peter was you know, a denial of Jesus. I mean, you know, John's, the baby of John, and they had this short temper. And all these people had all these kinds of issues. So the church is not a place where they ain't got issues. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't got issues. Amen. All of us in the pit with our with our issues. Amen. And yours may not be exactly mine, some of yours are mine. Amen. And mine may not be exactly yours, some of mine are yours. Amen. So so we ought not to be surprised when folks fall short. Nothing that's because we're human. And and and, 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 and and so God became human in Jesus. So if God is alive in Jesus today, in the church, then that means God is alive in us with all of our thoughts. Yeah. Hmm? And, and you say, well, what is God alive doing? And, and, and John, I don't like that metaphor of, of light. You know, it gets to be, you know, light and darkness. Darkness gets to be associated with us. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and that may not be a good way to use language, but, but what he's saying is that, that what God is doing is, is, is helping us to, 
to come and see the reality of our sin. To see how it is hurtful, how it is harmful. And, 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 and to create within us, you know, something that makes us want to forsake. Make us want to move hmm, beyond. And, and helping us to do that. And then helping us to help each other, amen, when it is discovered, get well. So the church is more like a hospital. When, when you tell that folks are sick, they go to the hospital. And in the hospital, the ministry of the hospital is to help folks get well. Yeah. Hmm? And so when you go to the hospital, there's all kinds of disease up in there. Mm -hmm. hmm? But all the folks in the hospital are working to help those with those various diseases get well. And so what God was doing here in the church, with the presence of Jesus, who's alive in us, is helping us to, amen, join us, face up to the reality of our sin, because the light is, is shown in hmm? And to discover that when the light is shown on it, it doesn't mean that God rejects us. It doesn't mean that God says, I'm through with you, I can't have no more to do with you. But then to be able to say, amen, through the, through the forgiveness that I make available to you through the community. Huh? Through the love that I make available to you. Is a what? Move huh? on and move beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? And that's what the sanctification is about. Sanctification is about God continually working with us to make us like yeah. hmm? And when that happens, we glorify. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that happens over when we're on the other side. Mm -hmm. And most of the problems we have, I think, for all time is that we want to criticize folks because they're not living glorified lives while they're in the process of being saved. Well, and so you got to remember that about yourself, you know, that you are in the process of being what? And you're not yet glorified. Amen. And that God is at work here in the church through Jesus, who's alive in the church. Amen. You know, help us to do that. And that, ha that happens as when we discover when it's disposed, when the light shines on it. Amen. Where we are able, with God through, through Jesus at work in the church, and the Jesus at work in us, helps us to forgive. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that forgiveness does not necessarily mean the consequences of your sin is not. You've got to still deal with the consequences. Amen. So in fact, when you get healed of certain diseases, <coughs> you still got to the hospital. Amen. Because diabetes has not given you a rub. Amen. And you come out of the hospital, the diabetes isn't gone. No. Amen. You still got to you still got to deal with it as you as you live out of life. Amen. Amen. The diabetes is still there. And that's what he's saying, is that, that 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 when you get saved, it's kind of like the illness, certain illnesses. You get saved from your sin, but the sin is still is still there. And you know that, because all y'all are saved, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, all y'all are saved. But the sin, yeah. come on. Yeah. But the sin, that's what I'm saying, be real, but the sin is still there. Hmm? The sin is what? Is still there. Amen. Amen. Now, how do we deal with the, how do we deal with the sin? Well, first of all, you have to face up to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're in denial about your disease, you're in denial about your diabetes, and you eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want, do whatever you want to do, amen, then you hasten your demise. <laughs> amen. And understand, it doesn't just, you know, and, and death is death, death is not the worst thing that can happen. No. See, death in some instances may be the best thing that can happen. Yeah. Amen. If I could just admit, if I got certain illnesses and I just did what I wanted to do and I died, that might not be so bad. Problem is decay. You hasten the decay. And the decay, huh? They start cutting off toes. Huh? Huh? You know, your kidneys don't work. What is that? You get blind. That's decay. See, all that's decay 
you know, because I didn't want to die. I wouldn't have to deal with that, but you have to deal with what? The decay. And that's what sin is. So the sin is still there. And if I don't deal with it, amen, then what happens is it, 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 the process of decay, amen, becomes worse than the process of death. Amen. And so you have to come to understand that once you have certain diseases, amen, that you can't just, you got them, you got to live with them. So you need to take your medicine. You need to observe the diet. Huh? You need to follow the regimens and disciplines that are a part of that. Amen. Now, the problem is I got the disease. I don't want the disease. I don't want, to, I don't want to decay. But then I get tired of the discipline. So I stop. You know, I'm, I don't know. Any of y'all, any of y'all, any of y'all suffer from chronic, chronic disease? Let me call chronic, can you? Yeah. Chronic disease? Hey Amen. Annie, raise her hand. Some of y'all can raise your hand. You got chronic diseases. That means that these diseases, sin is a chronic condition. Amen. They just get tired. I get tired of the fact that I can't eat the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I can't eat the ice cream. Amen. I can't eat the ice cream. Amen. I can't eat the ice cream. Amen. I
I'm not surprised he thinks y'all do. Because <laughs> hmm? I know what goes on in my mind and on my heart and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Keep it real, man. Keep it real. <laughs> Jesus said, you've heard it say you shouldn't kill. Well, I say if you're harboring, if you're harboring anger in your heart all the time. You're just angry all the time. Because somebody's hurt you, disappointed you. And you just can't get mad. Wow. You say, damn. You know, there's something I just can't forgive. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. And, and, and what's happening is, it's, it's, and see, and Jesus said, that stuff keeps you from being able to move on with your life. Amen. And then Jesus said, and then you were in denial as Barbara said. Why, Barbara? Because you're not facing up to the fact that that stuff is at work in you. Sometimes you know, not close. Sometimes you know, what makes me mad is that. I'll be doing it. Because I'm on the right to survive. Because I'm scared of the And I'd be mad at folks who be doing it. <laughs> and don't seem to get caught. And seem to be enjoying it. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be doing it because you know how that's wrong. And I don't want to get caught. I don't want to deal with it. But I'll be thinking about it, fantasizing about it, dreaming about it. What can you do? Amen! Amen. But I knew all these other folks seem to be doing it, and they be like, be going on. And I'll be wondering how God could make that happen. And then God seemed to be rewarding them more than he be rewarding me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here encouraging you all to sin. But you see, See what happens is I get caught up in me. I think it's me, but it's God's grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you gotta understand that that is God's grace. Yes, and, and, and and what happens is I get mad because this brother seems to be doing everything he want to do, and I can't do everything I want to do. Amen. And so I think I'm better than that brother. Yeah. I'm better than that brother. One brother said, "You know, I got ten women, you got one. Amen. Both of us ain't what we're supposed to be doing. You think you better because I got one. You got I got ten. You got one." And then that's the way it is. And we always want to position ourselves so we be better. And then what happens is that cancels out the possibility of grace. And your life becomes a lot better when you accept that you are who you are by the grace of God. And by the acceptance of that grace, it allows God to make you what? Grace. And that's what it happens. Jesus is the light. Hmm? And his focus. Hmm? Jesus is the way to make it possible. So how do you deal with it? Acknowledge it. Hmm? Confess it. And know that you can be forgiven. Hmm? And that then allows you to what? Move on to the church. And what God is working in the church helping us to do? Face up to the realities of our own shortcomings and things. I'll wait until we miss the mark. Mm -hmm. huh? To be able to confess that. And not kill each other when we confess that. Mm -hmm. Amen. But to what? Be able to what? Forgive one another. Mm -hmm. And then to help one another. 